you know, we keep talking Jameis and Cam, and for good reason, because in Jameis, you got the guy who threw for 5,000 yards, and he's got a big arm, and he seems to have turned his life around and has his head on straight uh, and his LASIK uh, done. And you've got Cam, who is a former first overall pick, who was entertaining and iconic in Carolina, as he said he would be. Um, but I don't know why I'm just keep sitting here so much, Mike, and thinking – once Burrow gets drafted, Dalton's got to go somewhere, and that's when Dalton's going to start coming to this mix, and he might be the one that gets the gig in Jacksonville. Obviously, Jay Gruden's there, so on and so forth. I wonder what you think about that quarterback carousel uh, going into the draft. Totally agree with you on all that. Um, I think Cam Newton um, has gotten one of the rawest deals in, that I've ever seen, a guy who was just physically just battered his whole career, the organization walks away from him, um, and there's this perception, and part of it is because of these times we're in now um, that it's hard to just get a real hardcore physical on guys because it's just what we're facing. But um, there's a, there's fear of his his health, his his is his body breaking down. I think whoever gets him will get a massive steal. Uh, I don't feel as, as strongly about Jameis Winston. I feel that way very strongly about Cam Newton. I think he's got another really strong, really impressive chapter to write. And whoever gets him, whoever gets him is going to get a huge bargain. Um, but I think I agree with everything you said. I think teams are going to go with Andy Dalton first. Uh, and we talked about some of these things that could happen in a draft. This is one of those things that we'll probably will see some type of deal in the draft. So a team that doesn't necessarily – you mentioned the Jaguars. That's a possibility. There are other teams who don't get to draft the player they want, so they go for Dalton. And then after that are guys like Cam, and then after that is Jameis to me. <laughs> I agree with you, Cam. I mean, you want to talk about a chip on his shoulder and his foot? I mean, you know, right? He's got the chip coming yeah. in, and he's got um, – and he's still Cam Newton. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I know he's not going to plow people through, you know, on, on third and short anymore unless he unless he's he's back healthy. And I know he does have such a cannon arm that he airmails people. Um, but there's just something about – I mean, he's still Cam Newton. And, and, and he'll put fannies in the seats. I'm, I'm just interested, but the Chargers have such a need for somebody like him. Maybe they're sitting back waiting if Tua drops to them and they come out with Tua – then Tua checks the box of the future is now. Come get your tickets. Everybody knows who Tua is. He's a delight, so on and so forth. Maybe that's what they're waiting for with the Chargers. What do you think? Well, well you hit on, I think, um, th one of the big things with Cam. I think there's a lot. There's a good half dozen teams that are have him on their radar and are looking to see what happens in the draft. And some of these dominoes will fall in the draft, and some of them may not until a little bit after. But I think he's one of the dominoes that could fall because I, I do think I, I, the way he has been at times portrayed and treated has always irritated me. But there are teams that know he still has a lot left. And there are teams that look at him and value him and think he's very, very good still. So it's just that some of them just aren't – they aren't willing to make a move now because they, they want to really get a good look at him physically. Um, and also they want to wait and see what happens with the quarterbacks in the draft. But eventually there's there's teams out there that are sort of waiting, watching him, monitoring with him, and they're going to make some moves maybe for a younger player in the draft. But um, they're, they're, he has a lot of interest. There's a lot of teams that really respect him and respect his game, respect him as a guy, respect his work ethic, all of that. So there's teams out there. I just wish he had been – I mean, look, this happens with the CNFL, the big boy league. It's brutal at times. The way guys are treated is brutal at times. I just wish he was treated a little bit better, more respectfully, because he deserves it. He's earned it. He's been a really good player in this league, a really good citizen in this league. Uh, and there's still, again, Rich, there's still a lot left there. He's still got some game left. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.